It's been 38 years since Roe v. Wade, the Supreme Court decision that made abortion in America legal. This week, hundreds of thousands of abortion rights opponents marked the anniversary with a protest on the steps of the Supreme Court. Meanwhile, on Capitol Hill, House Republicans are pushing for new limits on abortion. A similar movement has already gained support in a lot of state capitals. Tonight, we put the shifting battle over abortion in focus. Dr. Kermit Gosnell is a West Philadelphia doctor who was never trained as an OBGYN, but in fact, prosecutors say he carried out illegal late-term abortions. And did so for the last 20 years. So Gosnell has been death, charged with killing death, seven babies after they were born alive and for the murder of one woman. Remains from the procedures were in trash bags around his clinic. There were fetal remains in the same exact refrigerator that the employees had their lunch in that day. Criminal abuse like this is extremely rare, but it's not stopping both sides in the abortion debate from using the case to re-energize supporters. Women must decide our fate. On the one hand, you have abortion rights advocates who say, if you clamp down on abortion rights even further, you're going to have more doctors preying upon women because they won't have any other options out there. On the other side of the debate, you have anti-abortion advocates who say, look, this is precisely why you need to limit abortions to prevent people like Dr. Gosnell from operating. The issue of abortion has taken a back seat in recent years, but aggressive state action to limit abortion and new leadership in Congress, like House Speaker John Boehner, have pushed abortion back into the public debate. A ban on taxpayer funding of abortions is the will of the people, and it ought to be the will of the land. It's one of our highest legislative priorities, and as such, I've directed that it receive the designation of H.R. 3. Republicans are now back in power, in the House at least, after a walk in the desert, and they have certain constituencies that they need to satisfy. One of those constituencies is the conservative right wing of the party, for whom abortion is a very important issue all the time. Now with the new Congress, we are no longer playing defense as we were in the last two years. We can now play offense. Conservatives first went on the offensive during debate over health care reform, when they tried to keep any money from expanded insurance coverage from being used to pay for abortions. Opponents said existing law, in the form of the Hyde Amendment, already prohibited that. But that's not keeping abortion foes from trying again. When Speaker John Boehner and Congressman Smith introduced H.R. 3 last week, the reaction from everyone on Capitol Hill was, but this was supposed to be a jobs agenda, right? Although 40 percent of Americans favor limits on abortion, fewer than 1 percent consider the issue a priority. The abortion rate in the U.S. has dropped since 1980 from nearly 30 per 1,000 women of childbearing age to less than 20. Anti-abortion activists view House Resolution 3 as a chance for victory on a national stage in a battle that's clearly escalated beyond Washington since the November elections. I think if you're looking at abortion as a political issue, the real uh, action is going to be at the state level. In state after state, Democratic governors were replaced by Republican governors, many if not most of them favoring far more restrictions on abortion. Twenty-nine states are now led by governors or legislatures solidly opposed to Roe v. Wade, the 1973 Supreme Court decision that protected the right to an abortion. I think you're going to see uh, much more energy on the part of those who oppose abortions or favor more restrictions. Last year, 16 states enacted new restrictions on abortion. Nebraska is joining other states that ban abortion after 20 weeks of pregnancy. And Oklahoma wants to require doctors to show a woman the ultrasound of her fetus prior to an abortion. As more and more of these states enact laws that basically prohibit women from accessing abortion care, you are seeing in essence that that care is not available to them. And say oftentimes they have to go to another state. The Supreme Court has made very clear that it is not going to overturn Roe versus Wade. So what that means is you're seeing efforts in the states to kind of just push the envelope to see how far they can take it short of restricting abortion outright. But in Congress, Republican leaders say they have no plans to go further than H.R. 3, at least for now. A congressional aide told me that it doesn't matter if the Senate passes what the House passes. The Republicans go on the record showing the American people what they stand for. 
Here's how sensitive this issue is on Capitol Hill. Randy Nagabauer, a Republican from Texas, was so angry last year that another anti-abortion rights member had made a small compromise with the White House over abortion rights in the health care bill that he actually shouted the words, baby killer. This was a huge breach of decorum. Those who were shouting out are out of order. And it just shows how tempers flare when it comes to abortion. It's really one of those third rails of politics. The House will debate House Resolution 3 in the weeks ahead. If it passes, Democrats in the Senate are expected to try to table the legislation indefinitely.